Welcome to my life's venture channel. My name is Tong Vu, and I'll be narrating my story today. Um, today, I'll be sharing my adventure with you at Lake Manchi. This is, as you guess it, Lake Manchi South Shore Pond. One of the areas that I always like to go to when I want to think about going for trout fishing. Now, I'm usually hanging on the right side of the pond, close to the RV side, because that's where the hot spot is. But for today, since the degree is like in the 80s and 90s, I have a gut instinct that the trout would be hanging on the deep side of the pond, which is on the left side. Um, this is my uh, seventh time. Now, I've been six for six straight and not have gone skunk. Now, in the past, I have gone skunk so many times. I mean, people were catching me. It's just that I was not catching it. Uh, that would concern me as an amateur fisherman or angler. Anyway, today I have four setups. Okay, two bottom uh, rod uh, and two top side for, for fishing. And so one of the top side is a jig, a jigging rod. And the, uh, and the one of the top one is you know, just pulling the bait and floating. The two bottoms consists of current liner rigs. They're very light, very light weight on them. Uh, and also has a hook. And it'll be using power heads. Along with, you guess it, my lucky auto hook setter. Not only sometimes it's easy to put these in, but since it hasn't been raining for quite a few weeks now, the ground has dried up. And it's amazing how hard these grounds are. So, But the thing about yeah. these auto setters is that you have to stake it really, really deep to the ground. Yeah, yeah. You don't do that, down. otherwise, it's just gonna kill you. Yeah. You have to go all the way down because when it kicks, this thing will kick out the dirt and come right out. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's automatic. automatic. Yeah. That's exactly what I stated there. It's an auto hook. Yeah, you stay close to it, it'll knock you dead too. Oh, really? Yeah. You notice that this rod that I have, which is for the bottom, it has a really, really long lead. It's a double arm sling, so it's about like three uh, feet, a uh, foot of uh, lead line. And then, yeah, this is my special power eggs that I use, the most trusted. No other colors that I've used actually work, but this one, um, I just stumbled it upon accidentally uh, while on search on Amazon. But these power eggs has not failed me yet. I think today uh, it might not perform as well because they just planted the trout. Uh, they're scheduled to plant the trout in about 30 minutes. And if they do, I hope they will bite. But I have a feeling that they, they're they gonna have to settle down before they start biting. Let's see if I'm right. The guy next to me know I'm an amateur. So let's see how fast he moves out the way. <laughs> see? Thanks. Yeah, I sure don't want to hook him though. So you can see the line goes in and it goes right into the trigger. So when the fish bites it, you know, when it tugs on it, it's not going to automatically yank back. It's going to wait until the fish start tugging really hard. And that's when you know that it's 99% from the chance that it's going to uh, stay in, in the fish's mouth. Now, this is my second setup uh, on the second rod. And this is how I do it. You see the weight? It's really super light. It's about like a quarter, uh, uh, a quarter uh, ounce. Uh, 
uh, weight, and then I attach a bead in the back of it. Sorry about the blocking the camera view there. And then I attach it to a swivel. So these two lines, uh, the line, main line that I'm using is actually a 10 pound braid line, and it's attached to a four pound um, uh, uh, fluorocarbon line. If you plan to use the auto hook, uh, I'll tell you this, the auto hook will not work on fluorocarbon or monofilament line. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because of the fact that the fluorocarbon and monofilament, they intend to stretch as the fish bites, uh, but it will not trigger the auto hook to, to go off. Um, but when I use the braid line, it works perfectly because as soon as it starts biting, and you can see the pole goes down. The line will actually cause uh, the the uh, braid line will actually cause the hook auto hook to set. Maybe you might know something that I don't know, but yeah, the auto hook will hook on braid line. I tested out a monofilament and fluorocarbon. Nope, doesn't work at all. So these two rods that I have here are about some some feet rods. And they're all in very light, light uh, weight. Now this one, testing it out, and I was hoping that it worked for uh, for you guys to get to view uh, if my theory was correct. I was testing to see if the lead line would is it will actually be beneficial with the short lead line. Now, if I was on the far the opposite bank, the short lead line is actually the best bet because the um, the uh, the um, the water level over there is much, much lower. I was hoping to prove that point, but I have a feeling that I'm not going to get to prove my point today. It's been, it's been an hour and no bite. So um, I've decided I'm going to use, guess what? The jig rod. Yeah, as in, I'm an amateur still. I should have set up this rod already, but I didn't. Now this rod is actually an ultra light magnum uh, rod. I usually go to my uh, Ugly Stick GX2 rod for jigging, but this is the second time trying out this new rod. And I, 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 I'm starting to like this rod because uh, unlike the GX2. This rod has very pretty, pretty uh, have a lot of uh, effective control when you jig it. It the end of it doesn't go all over the place. It actually goes up and down. The GX2 when you jig it, it could be tw uh, twisting and twirling to the left or to the right, and your line could be going all over the place. Now, uh, when you jig, um, from what many experts that I've listened to on YouTube. You have to make the bait look like it's in, in, in its natural form, bouncing it off on the, uh, on the water columns. Now, the reason why the deep side is great for jigging is because the ground, is, uh, the uh, bottom floor is a little bit uh, you know, deeper. So uh, precisely when you use a 32, it's not going to touch the bottom floor. So you're not going to be scraping on any weeds or anything, which is what I like. And you could tend to keep it afloat for a very long time in order to track that trout that's just cruising on by. Anyway, stay tuned. Uh, I know that watching it sometimes can be very boring, but stay tuned. Don't tune out yet because I'm going to be... Uh, taking some of these trouts and I'm going to be cooking it, uh, filleting it and cooking it. Um, I'll show you how, uh, if you guys don't know, how to take out all the bones. Because my kids don't like eating uh, fish bones. Um, so I always go through the meticulous job of taking out all the fish bones prior to feeding it to them. Here I am using a, just a simple fisherman's knot. Twisting it, I usually like to twist the line, make, make the loop and twist the line at least uh, eight to ten times. 
But this is where uh, you keep on watching this. This is where my mistake, amateur mistake. Uh, with four pound lines, when you, air, you catch a huge giant trout, you gotta dub, you know, always double check that line to make sure that it's it's not uh, scra uh, scraped or it's not uh, you know too overly stretched. Otherwise, it will snap. So here's my first, uh, this is going to be my first try. Now I always like to kind of like uh, see where the hook is coming out. It's that way that when I hook it on, the uh, the lure will actually look really, really natural and straight. Some some anglers that I observe out here when they put their uh, lure on, it's all cricket uh, into a kind of like a J shape of the hook. So. Uh, and, and you know you, the only thing you hear about it is that they always complain that they can't seem to catch anything on the uh, single jig. Well, first of all, that's because they uh, had uh, put it on incorrectly. Like I always tell other anglers, it all depends on how you rig it, not just because you have the, the the same type of bait. I learned that uh, a few uh, a few months ago. From someone that uh, always fish on, on this pond. So, I always like to have like a, uh, a holding uh, pole. Now I'm preparing to uh, to start jigging uh, you know, on this lay on this pond. I can't only allow you to have two poles in the water, so per person. So I have to take out one of my jig. Fortunately, I have to take out this the little bad boy. This is the one with a shorter lead. And so far, this one, I, I don't know if you guys believe in, in luck, but this one, I have not caught a single fish on it yet. So, so this one will be going back t to the holder, and we'll see if the other one will work. Since I only have one hook left, I like to keep the the other one um, because it's close to the deep side of the uh, the pond. Uh, to my right side, there's just too many weeds on the on the ground. So if I toss it in there, I'm pretty sure that the fish is not going to see it. Um, my gut feeling instincts tells me that this is actually where all the fish will be hanging out, and it's probably on the deep side. That's why I keep on concentrating on my cast in that area. So my auto hook will be here while I uh, just took out the other one. So for today, it will be just one auto hook, and then the other line will be a jig head. So. So my jig head is ready to go. The one thing I like about jigging is that you can basically jig almost everywhere. It's very mobile, um, unlike the one that you uh, uh, put the power eggs or power bait that you put down and just let it stay. This one you can move all over the place. You could uh, throw left, throw right, where, wherever you want to, to uh, explore with this jig head. And, and the, the, the secret of jigging is just basically getting the rhythm and getting the rhythm down. Now, I see some people when they jig, they really jig. I mean, really jig, where the line is going up and down, up and down really, really fast. Um, some of the YouTubers that I listen to, 
they they tell me that it's just only a small slight of the uh, hand movement to cause your chick to move up and down so it will be moving up naturally and slowly gives a chance for the trout to look at it see it and go for it some people always wonder why they can't catch any fish even though they're jigging like I said uh, when you're jigging is uh, consider a lot of things one how you hook on the, the lures and two is exactly how well you jig and you jig it too hard you can't catch the trout So as you can see, I just keep on tossing and exploring. Sometimes you have to go to the same locations and, and dig some more. Can you buy now, what I always it? like to do huh? is I always look nope, at the no water. Hits. Even though, yeah. nope, no even though I don't see any trouts at all yeah. in the water, yeah. uh, what I look right away, at is catch the fins. It. You know, yeah. when the trout Got comes it? out and right they swim around on the cruise, you can see the Got ripples it? of the water. You can see the ripples coming up, and, and that's exactly where you want to throw, is exactly where the ripples are. Because that's probably where the trouts can be cruising around, chasing around. Now this is actually uh, not on the deep side, but this is actually where the, the, the depth of the water is really, really low. Um, I mean, the water is low on this side. There's plenty of plenty uh, uh, weeds around, so uh, that's that's one of the part of the reason why I, I wanted to move to the deeper side too as well. So, you know, I was not getting any hit on this side. Um, but you always have to explore, and this is one of the thing about like about jigging is that you can move around. If there's no bite on there, you can move around to uh, another spot where you know you might be able to catch some more fish. The only reason why I started on this side was because I started seeing fish bubbling up from the uh, from the depth of the water. The water is pretty much murky, so it's really hard to see even with a polarized sunglass. I will warn you guys at 90 uh, at 90 degree heat. Um, always when you go fishing, always go prepared. My first time out fishing, I didn't. I wasn't prepared. I was always in short and t-shirt. And so I, when I come back, I'm always getting oh, sunburned. As more time goes by, I become more experienced. As uh, I, I, you know, as you can see by my gears. Um, I'm fully clothed, short and long sleeve, probably 98 degrees outside. I had a, I had a mask covering. So I'm fully clothed uh, top down to prevent from sunburn. The clothes I'm wearing are uh, UV, uh, UV 50 plus uh, protections. And they're very, very light fabric. So even though it's hot out there, you're not extra warm inside. The wind blows right through your shirt and you can feel it. I wouldn't recommend it wearing it during the cold. I, you know, during the winter, I have to wear a jacket on top of it. But in the heat, it's always better to wear it. This is uh, the deep side of the area, and as you can see, I just caught one right on the jig. The four-pound test line. So oh, yeah. Always make sure you have a little drag on there, uh, because if you don't, your line will snap very easily. The angler told me that if you use a six pound, the trout will see it easily. So always use four pounds or two pounds. Yep. Uh, two pound, I find that it'll snap much more easier than the four pound. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. So that's a small little monster. Swallow it. Okay, buddy, okay, oh buddy. my goodness. Swallow it. Today is plant day too, by the way, guys. 
um, they put some 900 pounds into the pond just within uh, five minutes ago. Often it does take time for the fish to come over, but um, on plant days, I noticed that trout tends to go for the jig more than the uh, power baits. But I can tell you that once they start biting, they will start biting. Um, maybe I'm just lucky today because nobody else was in catching according to what a lot of anchor has, has uh, walked by me. This is actually my first catch, by the way. So after, I, I've been here for over a little over an hour. Um, and the reason I, why I didn't catch it is any fish yet was because I was testing out the power aids and trying to get it on camera how the auto hook works. Fortunately, that didn't go as planned. Auto hook always goes off when the camera is not on it. So I always got to check the wood to make sure that it's in decent shape. I mean, after the fish bite on it, it might be tore up. So if you put a put hook in there, uh, it's not gonna stay. These these notorious uh, lures are very soft rubber. So a little tear on it, it's gone. So always have to make sure you have plenty in the tackle box. And one of the things that I add on to these lures, unlike other people, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure how other angler does it, but. I this have poke gonna be a jiggy there, huh? flavor. This gonna be a jiggy there, huh? So what I do is I add in just you know a streak across the uh, the lures, and I see that that's what's catching them. It's always like garlic flavor. These traps are always attracted to garlic, not salmon flavor, not any other flavor, just garlic. Some days you'll be jigging for a whole day and nothing happens. But today, jigging was working around the clock. Here's another one. It was just five minutes apart from each other. As soon as I dropped it in, boom, it hits. Almost didn't turn on my camera in time to get this. This one was a biggie, by the way. As you can see, my line is very loose. So, this one was uh, about like a six or seven pound trout. It's a monster trout. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that you know I warn you is don't tighten that line. If you do, you'll see what happens. Number two. So, now they caught it. Number two. Ooh, nice size. That angler on the side over there was like really pissed Ooh, off. Ooh, nice size. He was not catching any trout the whole time I was oh. there. Easy, buddy, easy. He was just watching me. Oh. Easy, buddy, easy. I know how it is, the feelings, when you see people catching and, and you're not catching at all, and you're wondering, what am I doing wrong? Do I have the right girl? Oh. Do I have the right technique? That was a biggie. Oh. That was a biggie. Yeah, that was a giant trout right there. Here's a little advice for you, all you anglers out there. If you're planning to, to do this, uh, uh, one of the things that I always fail to do is check my line to make sure my line is still good. Ooh. I mean, oh. after the second or third catch, oh, here you go. with these oh. water format, it might be, you know, oh, here you go. Might be torn. That's great for two weeks in it. This is a, uh, now all these fish that I've been catching is actually a pretty nice sized eating trout. So two of them fighting for it. They're not small trout, by the way. 
Got two huh? fighting for it. No, no notorious jigs. Huh? No, no notorious jigs. <laughs> the guy with the guy over there is like getting all <laughs> angry about it. Just within 15 minutes, caught three trouts. I was hoping that it's gonna be another day where I catch trout so quick that I have to go. It started out like I was not gonna get any luck today because there was no bite on the power eggs. But like I said, when you fish for trout, you gotta come prepared with the full arsenal that you have. Uh, you gotta have a jig set. You gotta have a uh, bottom uh, uh, set. So. When you fish, you always throw two at a time. For me, I always go with one top side and one on bottom side. Uh, Just bottom, notorious uh, jig. Just so the power jig. eggs are at the bottom and the jig are the top, top water. At this point, I should have checked my line carefully to make sure there's no abrasion or overextended. And this is exactly what happened. I caught another huge giant. This one's the, uh, as big as the one on, on that I had on my oh. second catch. See so oh. how well that line, line just overextended. Oh. And the whole entire line snapped in half. So I haven't we had a light, not a light line, yeah? Mistake by an amateur. <laughs> so I haven't we had a light, not a light line, yeah? <laughs> huh? If it was on a braid, Four. it's probably not huh? gonna braid. But you got a big one too. That was a big one. one. And you got a big one too. That was a big one. Full contest line. There you go, boy. So I use a simple fisherman's knot, make a loop, and then just basically loop the tail and tag ends inside the loop and tighten it. That's that's really simple. I remember when I first time fished and I was amateur at it. I know my brother always get really annoyed each time I have to ask, "Hey, bro, can you tie this for me? Hey, can you tie for this?" But you know, that's the reason why they you know, always ask me fishing with them because I'm, I was an amateur and they didn't want to bother me to, you know me to bother them about the, uh, tying the knot for them but now I can do it myself so now this is my fourth catch 30 minutes has passed And by this time, I have assumed that probably the trout's probably Ooh. settling down to the bottom right now. It's not. See, I just got hit right here. Yeah, I just feels like that. I like by the Magnum. It's also like very, very, very touchy. It's a cheap rod. Uh, uh, in compared to the the other rods, it's very cheap. It's only like about fifty bucks, but it works. And it's an ultralight rod. It works uh, better than the ugly sticks. I guess this would be my new favorite uh, fishing pole to go to for it, especially for jigging. Before, before. Oh, gonna yeah. be on single today. Well, Don't just like any other time. day, it's just gonna be a fast one. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just say I got there by it was ten o'clock in the morning and uh, of course if I wasn't doing testing that morning I would have been out of there by 11 but I was testing out the, the power egg so I sat there for a long time I was hoping to catch the actions on camera but didn't go quite last time. now did you notice that I keep on putting the fish in there um, from experiences where I've learned if I don't ice those fish, uh, the meat starts to fall off. And if you want a good, fresh uh, fish, 
You gotta make sure that you put ice in there and in a cooler, especially on a hot day like this. I see a lot of anglers put it on a string, a stringer, and just put it in the water. But water temperature is, is like like right about like 60 degrees right now, so that water is not gonna keep the fish staying fresh. So I put ice in there and then uh, uh, and then some water to make it into an ice water. So when I throw the fish in there, even though when they die, uh, the one well, the body stays cold and the fish stays fresh. You guys notice that I keep I keep on rolling my camera to that rod. I was hoping that there would be some sort of, uh, of action on that, that rod. But lately, I was losing hope. It has been almost 30, over 30 minutes now and no actions on that rod yet. This is my fourth catch, so if I catch on the jig, then I guess that that uh, I'm either gonna have to throw it back in the water, huh? or uh, and then no, it's just, so just it's watch getting. and see if I catch it. Yeah, well, I'm almost. So uh, well, I'm let me ready. That's yeah, some I'm of the so angler that's well, been I'm fishing there. <laughs> They're complaining about how how slow it is. Let's see, so here I am. You could be casting this like forever and probably not catch any fish, but you never know. One thing I like about this seven foot magnum is that it could actually, uh, you know, you toss that uh, hook pretty far distance in compared to the at least the GX, GX2. Um, when I do the GX2, it's just right a few feet in front, uh, in front of me. But with this guy, this guy can go far away. If you look to your right, I have a feeling that it's gonna hit. There you go, come on. Well, you can start seeing movement there. There you go, come on. Yep, yeah, it's biting it. See, this is at the point where when you have bill on, that's the one when, when you yeah, start seeing that small little jiggle and you yank it out. Yeah, but with this guy, this is the auto hook. So he automatically hooks it. You see the fish actually jump. Uh, it was out of the frame of the camera, but it did actually jump. Can't go it's, where, anywhere. It's like a shocking Come effect on, on the Can't fish. Go where, anywhere. It's like Come an on. automatic uh, hook. I love the sound of braid coming in. So you see the braid on that line. Luckily, this is my fifth catch. That's what I like about these eggs. Well, and an auto hooker? That's what I like about these eggs. If it's set? And an auto hooker? Huh? If it's set? No, they're legal. Huh? Yeah, it's an auto hook. No, they're legal. Once they hook, it's it ain't coming hook. off. Once they hook, it ain't coming off. <laughs> these trout will swallow it, believe it or not. They will swallow the hook. Oh, well. My fifth time, my fifth catch, time to leave. These are my fourth rod, and I'm sure you know the difference of which one it is. The one that is totally catching onto the other one, that's my floater rod. So, hi right, guys. Guilty as charged. Uh, this, this is actually not today from today's catch. This trout was actually from a few days catch. Uh, I like to keep the other fish, even though they're fresh, I like to keep them in the freezer for a minute, for a while, before I actually start cooking it. But this is how I fillet it. So I cut right through the bones. Sorry if I, I'm sniffing a lot. Um, just let you know that I was, you know, the allergy was getting to me. Medication was wearing off. So I cut behind the gill plate and I slice it all the way until I hit the spine and I turn my fillet on knife and I cut right through the ribs. 
Now my girls, they don't like eating the fish heads, and neither do I. So, uh, yeah, it's a waste, but uh, that's what fillet is all about. And there you have it, two pieces of fillet. Now what's left is just basically the uh, the ribs, the rib bones, and the pin bones. And that's what I like about trout, you know, the, there's not a whole lot of bones in trouts. Uh, I usually hate eating trouts, uh, when, especially when it's cooked and the, it's not deboned. I hate those small little pin bones. I'm not so much, you know, a fan, uh, uh, you know, uh, disliking the, the rib bones, because the rib bones easy to to look at, uh, to get out. But the pin bones is what I don't like about it. So slice it out, slowly. And I always have my knife kind of like facing towards the bones. So I slice in just to, so that I won't, so you know, when I first doing this, I always like to slice it down and it kind of get all the way down to the skin, so, which means I was taking out a lot of meat. But as time goes, I learned that if I keep my knife up against the uh, rib bones, I would be able to, you know, debone it without having to take out all the fish meat. Believe me, when I first uh, uh, filleted a trout, there was nothing left of the trout. <laughs> all the meat was inside the garbage can. But as I gotten better and better, the meat stays on, so it does take practice. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to fillet it, and then once I cut it out and watch it debone it, I'm going to take the fish, I'm going to uh, marinate it and just and do some simple marinations, not a lot of spices. Basically salt, black pepper, and garlic. And a little bit of cayenne to go along with it. And it'll be based, uh, it'll be pan fried uh, inside a, uh, a pan uh, in garlic, uh, in butter. And after that, it'll turn to a sandwich. Watching this video is giving me sniffing too. <laughs> so now I got the ribs out. So if you, the pin bones are located right there on the side. Watch where my finger is running. That's where all the pin bones are located. So what I do is I just run my, my fingers on there and wherever it touches the bones, I'll use a little teaser to take it out. I've seen on YouTube where they actually take it out with a knife. Uh, basically what they do is they come in with a fillet knife and they'll uh, basically just cut right in that area toward at an angle to take it out. But, you know, I did that one time and it took out a lot of meat, whether you like it or not. I didn't like the fact that it was taking out a lot of meat out of the, the trout. Maybe I'm not just proficient at it, then I guess, you know, but I see that even if the, the professional uh, chef that does it, a huge chunk of uh, trout meat actually gets taken out. So I didn't like that. I prefer this method of using a tweezer, even though it is sometimes ridiculous and tedious, but I've gotten so used to it, as you can see, you know, each time I follow through, I see uh, pin balls, the tweezer goes right into the market and start pitching it out. When you uh, when you pull out the bones, uh, don't don't make a mistake like I did when I first started. Always pull in the direction where the pin bone is, uh, as uh, you know, a step into the uh, flesh of the trout. If you go in the opposite direction, like say instead of going uh, downward, uh, and you go upward, and you pull it upward, then you'll take some uh, of those flesh with it. And then by the time you're done, there's Basically, it's just like cutting it out. I'm 
But you know, what I do is I always go in and you know touch every angle. And sometimes I have to go in deeper because if if I and yeah, because it was if I fillet the fish uh, trout effectively, there will be a huge chunk of meat uh, uh, laying on top, and you might not be able to feel those pin bones. So you have to actually push hard on the flesh of the trout to f be able to feel where those pin bones are located. I've been, you can see that I've been doing this a couple of times, uh, quite a lot of times, so that's why <laughs> it looked like it's just come natural. Like, I'm just feeling it, pulling it, feeling it, pulling it. I'm just running along that line right there to make sure there's no more pin bones left. Touching the edge. Then filling it in, using my fingers uh, to run along with it to make sure there's no bones. You can see, there it is. I missed one. You might have to do run your fingers a couple times up and down the fish to make sure that there's no more bones left. And once it's done, put it on a separate plate, wash it up, and of course, I'm going to marinate it. have a large chunk of butter in there to melt it down on the stove. I'm going to be feeding this trout, by the way, to a daughter that doesn't like fish. Uh, I don't know why she doesn't like to eat fish, uh, but each time I cook fish, she will not eat, touch the fish, despite the fact that there's no bones in the fish at all. I mean, she likes to eat salmon and tuna, but for some reason, she rejects any other fish. So got toast, uh, toasted bread, and what I'm going to be using is very simple, simple stuff. I'm going to do some simple stuff: mayonnaise and sriracha. It's always the best combination. Tartar sauce works great, good too, but not a lot. Of my kids don't, don't like tartar sauce that much, so they always go with sriracha. And then after that, I'm gonna add in some cheese. But first, I'm gonna baste that with butter. One other thing they do that is the butter looks good. It's when it's uh, golden brown. You don't wanna, uh, you know, see the butter if the butter. Is Totally dark and black, that means that it just burns butter and smell on good. When it's golden brown like this, ooh, it tastes really good. I'm no chef, by the way. <laughs> I'm just watching on YouTube and doing it as they did. That's one of the great life adventures, you know, you learn as you go. The reason why I'm doing this, I want to crust on the skin, and then on top of that, I don't want to lose the flavoring on the top. So once I know that it's, it's actually cooked on the top, where the uh, marinade's not gonna fall off, then I roll them over and get some more crust on the, uh, on the uh, flesh. And while that's working. Time to break out, of course, the mozzarella cheese. This one is raw, it looks better and tastes better. Normally I would put only only one on, on the sandwich, uh, but I like to think this as a, a kind of like a double cheeseburger, so I would lay two uh, filet 
uh, on the sandwich. So one fillet, uh, one tire fillet on the sandwich, cut in half, uh, laying on top of each other. The result was really spectacular because it was the first time I actually saw my daughter in the whole entire dish. She actually said it tasted it. Well, I guess this is not the actual right. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. This is actually uh, and, uh, you know, use, use some of these tricks and trades. Um, Comanche can be very, very challenging catching trout. I mean, I see people stay out there for the whole entire day and then catch anything. Okay. Um, I've always been told it's not so much that you have to see the kind of bait, it's actually how you rig the bait onto mm -hmm. the bait. That's the difference. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, please like and su su uh, subscribe to my channel. This is a new channel, so uh, I guess I'm hoping that for every trip that I take, I'll be doing this. And I hope you guys enjoy it.